Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in the last video we took a look at an on-chain transaction of the actual exploit of Beauty Chain. In this video we're actually going to take that vulnerable function, we're going to implement it into Remix, update the code, and then exploit it ourselves in real time. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to grab that vulnerable function. We can do that within Remix in our browser. So open up the previous URL we had for the actual source code. Control F will search, type in batch, and you should find your batch transfer function. We're going to copy from just under the return true, we're going to copy that bracket up through batch transfer. So from lines 259 down to 271. Then we're going to open up Remix in our browser. We're going to create a new file. We're going to call this BEC target dot SOL, hit enter, and we're going to paste in that function. Now that function's not going to work just like that for a few reasons. First off, we don't have an actual contract. We're not telling it what compiler to use. And if you remember correctly, the old contract used this very, very old version of Solidity. We're actually going to update it to the new version so that you learn the differences between Solidity and how to fix the errors because we don't want you to just throw your hands in the air and quit if things get a little bit hard. So what we're going to do first is going to add in the pragma solidity line. So pragma solidity 0.6.6. So that's the compiler version we're using. And that should correspond right here with this compiler. And then what we're going to do is create our contract. So we're going to say contract BEC target. And we're going to put a bracket here, and then we need to put the bracket after the function since our function's actually in our contract, right? So from here, we need to build out the variables we need and different, you know, helper functions in order to make this thing work. So we're going to hit Control S, and that should give us an error and let us know what to do next. So this error on line five here looks like there's two errors. So the first one is saying that data location must be memory. And that is saying that for the address array. So in older version of Solidity, you didn't actually need to specify whether something was storage or memory. You do now, so we're gonna say memory. And it tries to help you. It's telling you that this input value to this function actually should be memory. So we'll do that and hit Control S again. And the next error was saying when not paused. So if you remember from the second uh, Solidity coding tutorial, this is a modifier, right? So this modifier is gonna run before this function can run. And it's saying when not paused. So if we took a look back at the contract, there's probably a function in there of a modifier that says, hey, when this contract is not paused, you can run this function. So they might pause the functionality of the contract if they're having issues or maybe they were gonna disable it completely. We don't really need to worry about that at all because we're just exploiting the vulnerability we have no need for a pause function. We're not deploying it in real world. So what we're gonna do is just gonna delete it because we don't actually need it. We're gonna hit Control S again, and we're gonna check out the next problem. So it's saying undeclared identifier balances, and that's because we don't have a balances mapping in this contract. So we'll just create one. So we'll say mapping, and then we're gonna do address because this is going to be an array of addresses and we're gonna map that to a uint value. And we're gonna call that balances. So all this is going to do is create a mapping between our address and the balance, right? Address to uint value. And now if we hit Control S again, all of the errors associated with that mapping go away. So then we have this error on line 16 here for the transfer function saying undeclared identifier but we don't actually need a transfer function because above that line, we're actually updating our balances, which will tell us whether our exploit worked. So we're just gonna cancel that out with a comment because when we're stripping this down to test our vulnerabilities, we don't need any unneeded functionality. We wanna test very simple first and then build it out from there. So next up on line 13, we have an error here. It's saying member sub not found. I believe this is actually from a safe math function they were using on this particular value to update the balance of the sender. Since we don't really care about that right now and we're not importing safe math, we'll just change this to a minus right now for our testing. 
and it looks like the next one is gonna use the same thing with add, so we'll just change this to a plus. However, if the balances of our receivers was quite high, we could overflow this in such a case. We will cover how to fix that in our next lesson with safe math. And then we're gonna hit control S again. It looks like we have no errors. We have a working contract with presumably a working batch transfer function. But in order to do a batch transfer, we need a balance. So we're gonna need to create some helper functions. We're gonna to need to create a deposit function so we can put funds into the user's mapping up here. And then we also are gonna need a get balance function just so we can monitor the state of the balances to see if our exploit worked. We'll add that functionality in right below our batch transfer function. So we'll say function deposit. We'll make that public since we need to call it. We'll make it payable because it's accepting a value. Any function in Ethereum that needs to accept a value needs to be payable. And then we're just gonna update our balances mapping with our new balance. So balances, and we'll say message.sender because that's the caller of this function. And we're just gonna say plus equal whatever value we're sending in. So message.value. So that's a very, very simple deposit function to get some actual funds in this contract to work with. Otherwise, we won't be able to use the batch transfer function. Then we're going to say function get balance. This is also going to need to be a public function. It's going to be a view function since we're not making any changes. And we're going to say returns. and it's gonna return a uint value of our actual balance. In order to do that, we just have to say return balances message.sender. So what's gonna happen here is it's just gonna call our balances array with our address of our message.sender, which is gonna send back our mapping of whatever our current balance is. And our current balance is whatever we sent into this contract and added right here. Pretty simple, but what this allows us to do is just have some helper functions while we're exploiting this to see where we're at. We'll hit Control S, see if we got any errors. Looks like I got one error here, so let's check out what that is. Uh, oh, unit instead of uint, so let's just change that really quick. All right, so we presumably have a working contract now with the helper functions that we need, and it's in the newer version of Solidity, so we should be able to test that this is actually functioning correctly, and then after we check that it's functioning correctly, we'll exploit the vulnerability and see how that works in real time. So over in our compiler tab here, we're gonna make sure we're using compiler version 0.6.6, .6, which matches up with our pragma line. We're gonna make sure that we're compiling the correct target, which is the BEC target. We hit compile. If we get a green check mark, we have no errors. If we did get errors, and we'll see them here, or we'll see them down here, and we're going to actually correct those before we go. So in the next tab down, this is our deploy and run transactions. We we'll make sure we're in our JavaScript VM. We're gonna deploy it with our first account here. So we'll just hit deploy and make sure that you know your contract selected is the correct one. You'll see it show up down here. We hit the down arrow and you'll see all of your functionality. So you have your batch transfer function, which is our target. We have our deposit function and we have our get balance function. So if we check our balance, we have a balance of zero. We can also check the balance of another one we have a balance of zero, so everything starts out at zero. If we go back to the first one and we hit deposit and we do it with 2000 way, and we'll say deposit, we should have a balance of 2000 right here, and we should be able to see that within the transaction. So that's right here. Now, if we check the balance of our next account, it should be zero. So we have a balance of zero and we also have a balance of zero on our third account. We will now send a batch transfer with a regular value to make sure the function is working before we try to exploit it. So in order to do that, we know the batch transfer takes an array of addresses and it takes a uint256 value. So we'll add in brackets for the array and we'll put quotes in there for the first address. 
And what we're going to do is use our second and third address. So we'll say copy. We'll paste that second address in here. Then we'll add in a second set of quotes and paste the third accounts address in here. And you'll always notice that, you know, we get this pop-up for copied value to clipboard. So that way we know it worked. And we're gonna paste that in here. Then we're gonna go outside of our brackets because this is no longer part of our array. And we're gonna add in our value. So we're gonna say 1000. And we hit batch transfer. We actually get an error here. And if you read the error, it is saying that error revert initial state, note the function called should be payable. So what we forgot to do is actually make our batch transfer payable. So let's do that now. We can easily do that with payable. But also note when you see that not payable error, it's not always that. In this case it is, but sometimes errors in Solidity get a little weird and you have to do research. So we hit control S and save that. We're gonna hop back into here and make sure it's compiled. And then we will delete our current contract. So let's go back to our first account here and we're gonna deploy it again. Once it's deployed, let's add in a deposit of 2000 way again. And we'll say deposit, check our balance. We're 2000, check our balance should be zero, perfect. So let's go back to our first account and we're gonna try our batch transfer. So we'll put our brackets in there again. We'll put our quotes in there again and we will grab the second account. Paste that in there. Another like comma and set of quotes. We'll paste in the third account And then outside of the bracket, we'll add in our value. So we'll say 100 way, we're gonna send to each. It shouldn't overflow anything. We have 2000 way, so we should be good. Make sure you're back in your first account because that's where you actually have your balance to send, right? And then we're gonna hit batch transfer. So we got a check mark, so that worked. So if we check the balance of our other accounts, so this one should be 100 way, it is perfect. So everything's working as normal and nothing was overflowed. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to try to send a large value. So now let's try to send, we have 2000 or actually right now we have 1800. So let's try to send more than we actually have. So we'll try to send 2000. And what you will see is that this should not work. So we'll say batch transfer. We get an error in here and it's saying that value should be less than your current balance, so that's correct. So we shouldn't be able to send more than 2,000. But now what we're gonna do is overflow this in order to bypass that check and send more money than we actually have. In order to do that, we're gonna use a very, very large value, which is in the blog. You can copy paste it from the blog. I have it right here. So it's this large value here. It starts with an eight. I believe there are 63 zeros after and it's in hex. So it's got a zero X in the beginning. So if we times this by two, this particular value, we'll wrap around past the limit of the UNT 256 and we'll end back up at zero, which will pass our check for our require up here, saying that our balances message.sender is greater than our amount because our amount will be zero. So what we'll do is we will replace this 2000 here and we will put this large amount by copy pasting it in and we'll hit batch transfer again. Now you'll notice that worked that time. So we have a very, very large amount, which we obviously don't have, but it was able to actually send it. And then once it's sent it, um, it's actually gonna update the balance in this for loop and it's gonna say, hey, the balances of receiver.i, which would be the current address, update that by adding the value to it that we're sending in. So let's check our second and third balance. So if we check our second balance here and we go get balance, we have a very, very large value. Now we didn't have that value to send, but it actually worked. It updated our balance because we overflowed that check up here with the amount being zero now that we overflowed and we were wrapped around. And then we sent that very, very large value 
right here, which we don't even have to send. So that is obviously a pretty big issue that we need to fix. The next question is, how do we fix that? So that's what we're gonna do in the next video. So if you learned something in this video, please hit the like button, share this with your friends or anybody else you think would benefit from it. And now let's hop in the next video and do a simple fix on this with a safe math function from Open Zeppelin.